Welcome to the Practical Animal Channel with me, John Beaumont. What I want to show today is the first step in the second step, really, in what happens after you take up a hawk from the molt. So here in the UK, we put our hawks down to molt in about February with the onset of spring when they've dropped their first flight feather. They stay in their aviaries, ideally, for about four or five months if the moult is protracted until the last flight feather has regrown. Then we take them up again, we weigh them, having put all the falconry furniture on them, such as anklets, jesses, swivel, leash, and then we call them from the perch to the fist and we begin the retraining process. What I want to point out to you is a mistake that a lot of people make in calling their birds from their regular bow perch or block in the case of a falcon. Why shouldn't you do this? Well, psychologically, the bird thinks that the leash around its swivel here only goes so far. Now, if you're calling your bird from its regular perch to your fist further than the leash length, that's going to start to confuse it because it's already grown accustomed to only being able to come the length of the leash. So normally, when you're ready for the first lesson, having taken the bird up again for the new season, you would put a, a creance on the swivel. Today, I'm going to use what's called a, a line for a 100 meter line for the discipline of long luring. So instead of using a swivel, I'm going to attach my line. Instead of using a creance, I'm going to use this line. The line goes onto the swivel like that. Like that. I'm then going to tie with one hand the falcon is not. That goes like that. If you watch some popularly available, commercially available DVDs on the subject, they may well have a different approach. Here's what I'm showing today. I remove the leash. The leash goes in my walking bag, one of the side compartments. Observe how I'm all doing this with, with one hand. Okay. Now ordinarily, I would have weighed the bird and that would have given, that is the weight that, uh, that I've taken her up at after four or five months of molt. Now, I've got a microphone cable attached to me, so I'm gonna have to lift the long line or the creance for today's purposes over the microphone cable the bird goes on this makeshift perch here she's not happy about it she's not used to it so i'm not pleased with having just one knot in it in the creance so i'm going to put a second knot in the bird is not used to this activity because she's been in avery for several months so i'm going to put her on our on our makeshift perch at the same time securing the creance line. So the hawk is on a makeshift perch. She's seen this black bag, which I usually use for her food. She's accustomed to it. She's conditioned. This acts as a psychological bridge. She knows I've weighed her. I've recorded the weight. This is the new weight. Here I go with the food. And she should come. That was perfect. So this bird hasn't come to me. I haven't been calling her for four months because she's been in milk. But from last year, when she was out very regularly, she knows what to expect. As soon as the food goes on the fist, she knows what to expect. So, 
That is the basic principle involved in taking your bird up for the first time after the moult. My name is John Beaumont. This is the Practical Animal Channel. And my question to you is this. Have you had difficulties training your bird after taking it up from the moult for the first time? For more videos on wildlife, the countryside and the animal industry, please subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Thank you very much.